It's a question that's been hotly debated for years. How many megapixels do you actually need? I'm gonna give you my thoughts on today's episode of Ask David Bergman. Hey there everybody, welcome back. Here I am, as always, answering your photography questions right here on Adorama TV. If you've got a photo question, you should know what to do by now. You just go to askdavidbergman.com and submit that form on the site. I just might pick your question and answer right here on a future show. Today's question was sent in by Achim H. And he wants to know, I know it's been debated to death, but I'd like to know your thoughts on how many megapixels do we need? I'm about to upgrade to a new camera body and I'm torn. Thanks, Ahim, for sending that in. I do appreciate it. Yes, this is a subject that's been discussed quite a bit, especially when buying a new camera. The marketing hype says we need more and more megapixels, but we've had lower resolution sensors for years and it doesn't seem like it's been a problem. What's a photographer to do? Well, like many things in photography, there's no single right or wrong answer for everybody, but I'm gonna go through the pros and cons so you can make an educated decision and get what's best for your own needs. Now let's start by talking about what megapixels actually are. When shooting pictures with a digital camera, there are millions of tiny little photo sites on the sensor in the camera. They read the light that's coming in through the lens. That light is then converted to digital information, ones and zeros, that can be understood by your camera's processor. Those photo sites effectively become pixels or tiny little dots of different colors. If you put them close enough together or you stand back far enough, they form an image. You'll usually have millions of pixels making up a single photo. And you know what we call one million pixels? You'll never guess, a megapixel. Now each camera natively has a set number of maximum megapixels. For example, the sensor in the Canon EOS R3 produces an image that is 6,000 pixels across by 4,000 pixels down. Now if you multiply those two numbers, that's 24 million pixels. So the R3 is considered to be a 24 megapixel camera. In the early digital days, you were lucky to get one or two megapixel cameras. Today, 20 is common, with some cameras having 50 or even 100 megapixels. But the question is, do we really need all of that data? How many megapixels is too many? Now let's go through some of the pros and cons in different categories. First, we have to talk about image quality. Camera sensors are made in different sizes and can range from very small, like in a mobile phone, up to relatively large ones that you find in medium format digital cameras. However, the size of the sensor doesn't necessarily tell you how many megapixels will be in your image. The Canon R3 and the R5 both have full frame 24 by 36 millimeter sensors. Now we've already determined that the R3 is 24 megapixels. The R5 though, has nearly 45 megapixels. It's a 45 megapixel camera. That's almost double the amount of pixels from the same size sensor. More megapixels from the same size area means the photo sites are pushed closer together. That means you're gonna have more detail in your images made from cameras with more megapixels. That's always gonna be a good thing, right? Well, to get more pixels from a given space, from that same amount of space, the individual photo sites have to be smaller. Smaller photo sites generally don't collect as much light as bigger ones. So, assuming everything else is the same, and that's a big caveat, while there may be more detail, pure image quality isn't as good on higher megapixel cameras. You'll have more digital noise, especially at higher ISOs, and you'll have less dynamic range. In practice though, everything else is never the same. As I said, there was a caveat. There are a lot of factors that can affect the quality of your image besides just the size of the photo sites. What lens you use, for example, makes a huge difference. Using good glass is probably the best thing you can do to increase the technical quality of your photos. That's gonna minimize things like chromatic aberration, diffraction, and even flare. Also, just exposing your image correctly, as simple as that, will help. Dynamic range isn't a huge issue if you're not trying to rescue tones that are outside of the range of the camera. Noise can be lessened by shooting raw files and not brightening up the shadow areas too much, and the in-camera processing gets better and better with every generation of camera to improve quality. We also have fantastic new AI noise reduction technology that can really level the playing field. The thing is, most people are not zooming into your images at 300% to check image quality. If you make a compelling photograph that moves people, a slight change in quality based on the number of megapixels is kind of irrelevant. 
Next is the display and printing of your images. We have to talk about that, of course. For showing images on your phone or on your computer screen, you don't really need that many megapixels at all. Instagram, for example, displays images with a maximum uh, uh, pixel dimension, excuse me, a minimum pixel dimension of, no, maximum pixel dimension of 1920 by 1080. That's barely over two megapixels. That's the size that it displays. So unless you're shooting with a 20 year old digital camera, you should be fine. Even displaying images full screen on a 4K monitor won't be much of an issue. 4K UHD resolution is 3840 by 2160 pixels. That's about eight and a third megapixels. So anything above an eight megapixel image will have more than enough resolution, even for a quote high resolution 4K monitor. Now as for printing, this is where things get a bit more interesting. You might hear terms like PPI and DPI mentioned when talking about resolution for prints. Sometimes people use those interchangeably, but they're not the same thing. PPI is pixels per inch. That's how many pixels are in every inch of your photo and mostly applies when viewed on a computer screen, a phone and things like that. DPI is dots per inch, not pixels. Dots of, those are dots of ink that are sprayed onto an inkjet print. Now, while PPI and DPI are not exactly the same, there is some correlation. I actually did a video with more explanation about PPI and DPI, and I'll put a link down below if you wanna watch that later. But in general, the more megapixels in your image, the more detail you can see in a print. The size of the print also matters because the bigger the print you make, the more space those pixels pixels are gonna have between them, and your images can start to look low quality, it can start to fall apart, as we say. Now, the other factor to keep in mind with printing, though, is viewing distance. The bigger the print, the further away you're likely to stand to take it all in. So you don't necessarily need super high resolution cameras to make big prints. Let's take a look at some numbers. For a print that you're gonna look at up close, the general rule of thumb is that you want 300 pixels for every inch. Those are nice and tight and aren't gonna show you, you're not gonna be able to see the individual pixels when you look at that image. Now, in my experience, you can even print at 150 PPI at half 300 and not really tell the difference between that and 300 PPI. But just for argument's sake here, let's use 300 PPI for these examples. Now, in that case, a four by six inch print would need at least 1200 pixels, that's four inches times 300 inch, uh, pixels per inch by 1800 pixels, that's six times 300. 1200 times 1800 is about 2.2 million pixels. So two megapixels is all you need for a very good high quality four by six inch print. Now what about an 11 by 14 inch print? Well, if you want the highest quality 300 PPI to look at up close, you're gonna need 3,300 by 4,200 pixels or 13.8 megapixels. Anything above that is not needed for that print. Now, what about a giant billboard on the side of the highway? Those things are massive, right? Billboards can be 48 feet wide by 14 feet high. If you wanted that billboard to be the highest quality possible at 300 PPI, you'd need an image of over 8,700 megapixels. That's a lot. Needless to say, that's not gonna happen, right? Um, but remember, viewing distance. Realistically, no one is gonna see a billboard from two feet away. Those are usually viewed from a couple of blocks away, so the PPI can actually be much lower than 300. Usually they're printed between 10 and 40. At 10 PPI, you'd only need a 10 megapixel image to fill up that 48 foot billboard. So in pretty much every scenario I've described so far, you haven't needed more than 20 megapixels. But what about cropping? Well, when you crop into your image, you throw away some of those precious pixels. If you like to crop into your images a lot, then you're gonna need to start with more megapixels so you'll have enough pixels and detail left in your photos after the crop. Let's take a look at two pictures here. Now, I shot both of these last week at the Luke Combs concert at the Penn State University Stadium. I carry two Canon EOS R3 bodies on my shoulders during the show, but I also have an R5 body on the stage as a remote camera that I can trigger from wherever I am in the stadium. Now, this one is from me standing on stage with the 24 megapixel R3, and this one is from the remote 45 megapixel R5. Now, without any cropping, either one can be used for pretty much anything. However, what if I make a radically extreme crop? Let's go in all the way in on both of them and see what happens. The R5 starts out at 8192 by 5464 pixels or 44.7 megapixels. 
after this extreme crop, it's still 2059 by 1379. That's just under three megapixels, which as I said earlier, is still big enough for social media. If I wanted to print this at 150 PPI, I could make it pretty close to 11 by 14, no problem. That's kind of insane with that amount of a crop, but because I started with 45 megapixels, I have a lot of room to give and can still get a very high quality print and easily cover social media. But now let's look at the R3 file. It starts at only 6,000 by 4,000, only 6,000 by 4,000. After this radical crop, it's 997 by 665. That's less than one megapixel. It's about 663,000 pixels. That's not much at all. It's smaller than the required amount used by Instagram. And if printing at 150 PPI, it's only about two and a half by three and a half inches. So that's roughly the same percentage of crop on both photos, but the camera with more megapixels can handle it much easier. Now, finally, when talking about low versus high resolution cameras, I do need to address file size. Yes, more megapixels means bigger files. So you need to buy bigger cards for your cameras and more hard drives for storage. You double the amount of pixels, you're usually gonna average around double the file size. That's a significant difference. I spend a nice chunk of my own money every year just on storage for all these images. But I shoot a lot of photos. I'm a very high quantity shooter. Hard drives do get cheaper all the time, but if price is your number one concern, then this is something you need to consider. I think for most people who don't shoot as much as I do, it's less of an issue. So those are really the main things to think about when buying a new camera with low or high megapixels. Considering everything I talked about, for me, there are two main reasons to buy a super high megapixel camera. What I love about my 45 megapixel Canon R5 is that I can crop almost as much as I want. Like I showed earlier, when it's a remote camera and I don't know exactly where the action is gonna be taking place, I can shoot wider than normal, knowing that I have plenty of pixels to crop into, making the final image that I want. In practice, I'm not gonna crop as much as I showed before, but that Luke remote shot can go from this to this, and I still have 24 megapixels left after cropping. Now, the other reason to want more megapixels is simply future-proofing. We used to think that 10 megapixels was a lot. Holy cow, 10 million pixels. Why would you ever need that many? But that's how technology works, right? If you're watching this 10 years from now in 2034, you're probably laughing at me talking about high-resolution 45 megapixel images. So when I'm shooting portraits with celebrities in the studio and I'm taking the time to carefully light everything and make cool images that I want to stand the test of time, I'm gonna use the R5 just to be safe. Now, having said that, today in 2024, I think most people will be just fine with a camera in the 20 to 24 megapixel range. Image quality is excellent and you can display or print your images at almost any size. What do you all think? How many megapixels is your camera and do you wish you had more? Is there is it possible to have too many megapixels? Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Remember, you can send in your own photo questions by going to askdavidbergman.com. If you like these videos, I do appreciate you hitting that like button. And of course, subscribing to the Adorama YouTube channel. Click that bell icon so you'll be notified when new shows come out for myself and all the hosts right here on Adorama TV. Thanks so much for joining me, and I hope you'll come back next time right here on Ask David Bergman.